The history of tea is long and complex, spreading across multiple cultures over the span of thousands of years. Tea likely originated in the Yunnan region during the Shang dynasty as a medicinal drink. An early credible record of tea drinking dates to the 3rd century AD, in a medical text written by Hua Tuo. Tea was first introduced to Portuguese priests and merchants in Lebanon during the 16th century. Drinking tea became popular in Britain during the 17th century. The British introduced tea production, as well as tea consumption, to India, in order to compete with the Chinese monopoly on tea. Geographic origins Camellia sinensis originated in Southeast Asia, specifically around the intersection of latitude 29 degrees north and longitude 98 degrees east, the point of confluence of the lands of Northeast India, North Burma, Southwest China and Tibet. The plant was introduced to more than 52 countries, from this center of origin. On morphological differences between the Assamese and Chinese varieties, botanists have long asserted a dual botanical origin for T. However, statistical cluster analysis, the same chromosome number 2n equals 30, easy hybridization, and various types of intermediate hybrids and spontaneous polyploids all appear to demonstrate a single place of origin for Camellia sinensis. The area including the northern part of Burma and Yunnan and Sichuan provinces of China, Yunnan province has also been identified as the birthplace of tea. The first area where humans figured out that eating tea leaves or brewing a cup could be pleasant. Fengqing County in the Linkang City Prefecture of Yunnan Province in China is said to be home to the world's oldest cultivated tea tree, some 3,200 years old. According to the story of tea, tea drinking likely began in Yunnan Province during the Shang Dynasty, 1500 BC to 1046 BC, as a medicinal drink. From there, the drink spread to Sichuan, and it is believed that there for the first time, people began to boil tea leaves for consumption into a concentrated liquid without the addition of other leaves or herbs, thereby using tea as a bitter yet stimulating drink, rather than as a medicinal concoction. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin myths In one popular Chinese legend, Shenong, the legendary emperor of China and inventor of agriculture and Chinese medicine was drinking a bowl of just boiled water due to a decree that his subjects must boil water before drinking it. Sometime around 2737 BC, a few leaves were blown, from a nearby tree, into his water, changing the color and taste. The emperor took a sip of the brew and was pleasantly surprised by its flavor and restorative properties. A variant of the legend tells that the emperor tested the medical properties of various herbs on himself, some of them poisonous, and found tea to work as an antidote. Shenong is also mentioned in Lu Yu's famous early work on the subject, the classic of tea. A similar Chinese legend goes that the god of agriculture would chew the leaves, stems, and roots of various plants to discover medicinal herbs. If he consumed a poisonous plant, he would chew tea leaves to counteract the poison. A rather gruesome legend dates back to the Tang dynasty. In the legend, Bodhidharma, the founder of Chan Buddhism, accidentally fell asleep after meditating in front of a wall for nine years. He woke up in such disgust at his weakness that he cut off his own eyelids. They fell to the ground and took root, growing into tea bushes. Sometimes, another version of the story is told with Gautama Buddha in place of Bodhidharma. Scholars however believe that tea drinking likely originated in the southwest of China, and that the Chinese words for tea themselves may have been originally derived from the Austro-Asiatic languages of the people who originally inhabited that area. Whether or not these legends have any basis in fact, tea has played a significant role in Asian culture for centuries as a staple beverage, a curative, and a status symbol. It is not surprising, therefore, that theories of its origin are often religious or royal in nature. <laughs> Early history <laughs> China The Chinese have consumed tea for thousands of years. The earliest physical evidence known to date, found in 2016, comes from the mausoleum of Emperor Jing of Han in Xi'an, indicating that tea was drunk by Han dynasty emperors as early as the 2nd century BC. 
The samples were identified as T from the genus Camellia particularly via mass spectrometry, and written records suggest that it may have been drunk earlier. People of the Han dynasty used tea as medicine though the first use of tea as a stimulant is unknown. China is considered to have the earliest records of tea consumption, with possible records dating back to the 10th century BC. Note however that the current word for tea in Chinese only came into use in the 8th century AD, there are therefore uncertainties as to whether the older words used are the same as tea. The word tu tu appears in Shijing and other ancient texts to signify a kind of bitter vegetable. Ku kai and it is possible that it referred to a number of different plants, such as sothisal, chicory, or smart weed, including tea. In the Chronicles of Huayang, it was recorded that the Ba people in Sichuan presented tu to the Zhou king. The state of Ba and its neighbor Shu were later conquered by the Qin, and according to the 17th century scholar Gu Yanwu who wrote in Ri Ji Lu, Ri Ji Lu it was after the Qin had taken Shu that they learned how to drink tea. The first known reference to boiling tea came from the Han dynasty work, The Contract for a Youth, written by Wang Bao where, among the tasks listed to be undertaken by the youth, he shall boil tea and fill the utensils, and he shall buy tea at Wuyang. The first record of cultivation of tea also dated it to this period Ganlu era of Emperor Zan of Han when tea was cultivated on Meng Mountain Men Shan near Chengdu. From the Tang to the Qing dynasties, the first 360 leaves of tea grown here were picked each spring and presented to the emperor. Even today its green and yellow teas, such as the Mengding Ganlu tea, are still sought after. An unknown Chinese inventor was also the first person to invent a tea shredder. An early credible record of tea drinking dates to 220 AD, in a medical text Shi Lun, Shi Lun by Hua Tuo, who stated, To drink bitter tea constantly makes one think better. Another possible early reference to tea is found in a letter written by the Qin dynasty general Lu Kun. However, before the mid-8th century Tang dynasty, tea drinking was primarily a southern Chinese practice. It became widely popular during the Tang dynasty, when it was spread to Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. Laozi, the classical Chinese philosopher, was said to describe tea as the froth of the liquid jade, and named it an indispensable ingredient to the elixir of life. Legend has it that Master Lao was saddened by society's moral decay and, sensing that the end of the dynasty was near, he journeyed westward to the unsettled territories, never to be seen again. While passing along the nation's border, he encountered and was offered tea by a customs inspector named Yin Shi. Yin Shi encouraged him to compile his teachings into a single book so that future generations might benefit from his wisdom. This then became known as the Tao De Jing, a collection of Laozi's sayings. During the Sui Dynasty (589–618 AD), tea was introduced to Japan by Buddhist monks. The Tang Dynasty writer Lu Yu's simplified Chinese, Lu Yu traditional Chinese, Lu Yu Pinyin, Lu Yu Cha Jing, the classic of tea, simplified Chinese, Cha Jing traditional Chinese, Cha Jing Pinyin, Cha Jing, is an early work on the subject. See also Tea Classics. According to Cha Jing, tea drinking was widespread. The book describes how tea plants were grown, the leaves processed, and tea prepared as a beverage. It also describes how tea was evaluated. The book also discusses where the best tea leaves were produced. Teas produced in this period were mainly tea bricks, which were often used as currency, especially further from the center of the empire where coins lost their value. In this period, tea leaves were steamed, then pounded and shaped into cake or brick forms. During the Song Dynasty production and preparation of all tea changed. The tea of Song included many loose leaf styles to preserve the delicate character favored by court society, and it is the origin of today's loose teas and the practice of brewed tea. A new powdered form of tea also emerged. Steaming tea leaves was the primary process used for centuries in the preparation of tea. After the transition from compressed tea to the powdered form, the production of tea for trade and distribution changed once again. The Chinese learned to process tea in a different way in the mid-13th century. Tea leaves were roasted and then crumbled rather than steamed. By the Yuan and Ming dynasties, unfermented tea leaves were first pan-fried, then rolled and dried. This stops the oxidation process which turns the leaves dark and allows tea to remain green. In the 15th century, oolong tea, where the tea leaves were allowed to partially ferment before pan frying, was developed. Western taste, however, preferred the fully oxidized black tea, and the leaves were allowed to ferment further. 
Yellow tea was an accidental discovery in the production of green tea during the Ming dynasty, when apparently sloppy practices allowed the leaves to turn yellow, but yielded a different flavor as a result. Tea production in China, historically, was a laborious process, conducted in distant and often poorly accessible regions. This led to the rise of many apocryphal stories and legends surrounding the harvesting process. For example, one story that has been told for many years is that of a village where monkeys pick tea. According to this legend, the villagers stand below the monkeys and taunt them. The monkeys, in turn, become angry, and grab handfuls of tea leaves and throw them at the villagers. There are products sold today that claim to be harvested in this manner, but no reliable commentators have observed this firsthand, and most doubt that it happened at all. For many hundreds of years the commercially used tea tree has been, in shape, more of a bush than a tree. Monkey pick tea is more likely a name of certain varieties than a description of how it was obtained. In 1391, the Ming court issued a decree that only loose tea would be accepted as a tribute. As a result, loose tea production increased and processing techniques advanced. Soon, most tea was distributed in full leaf, loose form and steeped in earthenware vessels. <laughs> Hong Kong in Hong Kong, apart from the yum cha culture of southern China, a localized version of English tea was developed, the Hong Kong-style milk tea. <laughs> Japan Tea use spread to Japan about the 6th century AD. Tea became a drink of the religious classes in Japan when Japanese priests and envoys, sent to China to learn about its culture, brought tea to Japan. Ancient recordings indicate the first batch of tea seeds were brought by a priest named Saicho, Zui Sheung 767 to 822 in 805 and then by another named Kakai, Konghai 774 to 835 in 806. It became a drink of the royal classes when Emperor Saga, Kuo Atian Huang the Japanese emperor, encouraged the growth of tea plants. Seeds were imported from China, and cultivation in Japan began. In 1191, the famous Zen priest Isai, Rong Shi 1141-1215, brought back tea seeds to Kyoto. Some of the tea seeds were given to the priest Myo Shonen, and became the basis for Uji tea. The oldest tea specialty book in Japan, Kisa Yojoki, Kai Cha Yang Sheng Ji How to Stay Healthy by Drinking Tea, was written by Isai. The two-volume book was written in 1211 after his second and last visit to China. The first sentence states. Tea is the ultimate mental and medical remedy and has the ability to make one's life more full and complete." Isai was also instrumental in introducing tea consumption to the warrior class, which rose to political prominence after the Heian period. Green tea became a staple among cultured people in Japan—a brew for the gentry and the Buddhist priesthood alike. Production grew and tea became increasingly accessible, though still a privilege enjoyed mostly by the upper classes. The tea ceremony of Japan was introduced from China in the 15th century by Buddhists as a semi-religious social custom. The modern tea ceremony developed over several centuries by Zen Buddhist monks under the original guidance of the monk Sen no Rikyu, Qian Li Shu 1522-1591. In fact, both the beverage and the ceremony surrounding it played a prominent role in feudal diplomacy. In 1738, Soen Nagatani developed Japanese sencha, jian cha literally roasted tea, which is an unfermented form of green tea. It is the most popular form of tea in Japan today. In 1835, Kahei Yamamoto developed gyokuro, yu lu literally jewel dew, by shading tea trees during the weeks leading up to harvesting. At the end of the Meiji period 1868 machine manufacturing of green tea was introduced and began replacing handmade tea. Korea The first historical record documenting the offering of tea to an ancestral god describes a rite in the year 661 in which a tea offering was made to the spirit of King Suro, the founder of the Jiamgwangaya Kingdom 42 Records from the Goryeo dynasty show that tea offerings were made in Buddhist temples to the spirits of revered monks. 
During the Joseon dynasty (1392–1910), the royal Yi family and the aristocracy used tea for simple rites. The day tea rite was a common daytime ceremony, whereas the special tea rite was reserved for specific occasions. Toward the end of the Joseon dynasty, commoners joined the trend and used tea for ancestral rites, following the Chinese example based on Zhu Zai's text Formalities of Family. Stoneware was common, ceramic more frequent, mostly made in provincial kilns, with porcelain rare, imperial porcelain with dragons the rarest. The earliest kinds of tea used in tea ceremonies were heavily pressed cakes of black tea, the equivalent of aged pu erh tea still popular in China. However, importation of tea plants by Buddhist monks brought a more delicate series of teas into Korea, and the tea ceremony. Green tea, jack sol, jagziol kei, or jungno, juglo zu, is most often served. However, other teas such as biok soryong, biog soliong bai shali, Qianhachen, Qianhachen Tian Sha Chun Ujian, Ujian Yu Qian Oxian, Oxian Yu Quan, as well as native chrysanthemum tea, persimmon leaf tea, or mugwort tea may be served at different times of the year. Vietnam Vietnamese green teas have been largely unknown outside of mainland Asia until the present day. Recent free enterprise initiatives are introducing these green teas to outside countries through new export activities. Some specialty Vietnamese teas include lotus tea and jasmine tea. Vietnam also produces black and oolong teas in lesser quantities. Vietnamese teas are produced in many areas that have been known for tea house retreats. For example, some are located amidst immense tea forests of the Lamdong Highlands, where there is a community of ancient Ruang houses built at the end of the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> Global expansion The earliest record of tea in a more Occidental writing is said to be found in the statement of an Arabian traveller, that after the year 879 the main sources of revenue in Canton were the duties on salt and tea. Marco Polo records the deposition of a Chinese minister of finance in 1285 for his arbitrary augmentation of the tea taxes. The travelers Giovanni Battista Ramusio 1559, L. Almeida 1576, Maffei 1588, and Teixeira 1610 also mentioned tea. In 1557, Portugal established a trading port in Macau and word of the Chinese drink, cha, spread quickly, but there is no mention of them bringing any samples home. In the early 17th century, a ship of the Dutch East India Company brought the first green tea leaves to Amsterdam from China. Tea was known in France by 1636. It enjoyed a brief period of popularity in Paris around 1648. The history of tea in Russia can also be traced back to the 17th century. Tea was first offered by China as a gift to Tsar Michael I in 1618. The Russian ambassador tried the drink, he did not care for it and rejected the offer, delaying tea's Russian introduction by 50 years. In 1689, tea was regularly imported from China to Russia via a caravan of hundreds of camels traveling the year-long journey, making it a precious commodity at the time. Tea was appearing in German apothecaries by 1657 but never gained much esteem except in coastal areas such as Ostfriesland. Tea first appeared publicly in England during the 1650s, where it was introduced through coffeehouses. From there it was introduced to British colonies in America and elsewhere. Topic. Portugal and Italy Tea was first introduced to Europe by Italian traveller Giovanni Battista Ramusio, who in 1555 published Voyages and Travels, containing the first European reference to tea, which he calls Chai Katai. His accounts were based on second-hand reports. Portuguese priests and merchants in the 16th century made their first contact with tea in China, at which time it was termed cha. The first Portuguese ships reached China in 1516, and in 1560 Portuguese missionary Gaspar da Cruz published the first Portuguese account of Chinese tea. In 1565 Italian missionary Luis Almeida published the first European account of tea in Japan. <inaudible> India 
Commercial production of tea was first introduced into India by the British, in an attempt to break the Chinese monopoly on tea. The British, using Chinese seeds, plus Chinese planting and cultivating techniques, launched a tea industry by offering land in Assam to any European who agreed to cultivate tea for export. Tea was originally only consumed by anglicized Indians. It was not until the 1950s that tea grew widely popular in India through a successful advertising campaign by the India Tea Board. Prior to the British, the plant may have been used for medicinal purposes. Some cite the Sanjivana tea plant first recorded reference of tea use in India. However, scientific studies have shown that the Sanjivana plant is in fact a different plant and is not related to tea. The Singpho tribe and the Kamti tribe also validate that they have been consuming tea since the 12th century. However, commercial production of tea in India did not begin until the arrival of the British East India Company, at which point large tracts of land were converted for mass tea production. The Chinese variety is used for Sikkim, Darjeeling tea, and the Assamese variety, clonal to the native to Assam, everywhere else. The British started commercial tea plantations in India and in Ceylon. In 1824 tea plants were discovered in the hills along the frontier between Burma and Assam. The British introduced tea culture into India in 1836 and into Ceylon in 1867. At first they used seeds from China, but later seeds from the clonal Assam plant were used. Only black tea was produced until recent decades. Tea is called chai in India. India was the top producer of tea for nearly a century, but was displaced by China as the top tea producer in the 21st century. Indian tea companies have acquired a number of iconic foreign tea enterprises including British brands Lipton, Tetley, Twinings and Taifu. While India is the largest consumer of tea worldwide, the per capita consumption of tea in India remains a modest 750 grams per person every year. Recently consumption of green tea has seen a great upsurge across the cities. Average growth in the consumption is assumed to be over 50%. One estimate suggests the market size has already crossed over 1,400 crore Indian rupees and will reach a 6,000 crore in next few years. Top station, 41 kilometers one hour from Munnar, is aptly named, as it is home to some of the highest tea plantations in India. It lies on the state of Kerala and commands a panoramic view of rolling green hills. Topic: <inaudible> Iran. Gilan in north of Iran is main production center of Iranian tea. Historically, Lahijan is the first town in Iran to have tea plantations. With its mild weather, soil quality and fresh spring water, Lahijan stands to have the largest area of tea cultivation in Iran. Lahijan spring tea is the best quality tea produced in the country. Tea is cultivated at other cities of Gilan, for example Fumin and Raudzar. Taiwan <inaudible> 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 Taiwan is famous for the making of oolong tea and green tea, as well as many Western-styled teas. Bubble tea or Gen Zhu Nai Cha Mandarin, Gen Zhu Nai Cha is black tea mixed with sweetened condensed milk and tapioca. Since the island was known to Westerners for many centuries as Formosa, short for the Portuguese ILHA Formosa, or Beautiful Island, tea grown in Taiwan is often identified by that name. Thailand Thai tea or cha yen Thai, cha yen in Thailand, is a drink made from strongly brewed black tea, red tea, in East Asia. Other ingredients may include added orange blossom water, star anise, crushed tamarind seed or red and yellow food coloring, and sometimes other spices as well. This tea is sweetened with sugar and condensed milk. Usually, Thai people drink Thai hot tea in the morning, frequently with yao ya gui fried dough or pa tong ko thai. The varieties of Thai tea include Thai hot tea thai, cha arexan cha ron, is Thai tea served hot. Dark Thai hot tea thai, cha da arexan cha dam ron, is Thai tea served hot with no milk content, sweetened with sugar only. Dark Thai iced tea thai, cha da yen cha dam yen, is Thai tea served cold with ice and without milk. <inaudible> 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 
Topic: <inaudible> Turkey. Turkey is traditionally one of the largest tea markets in the world. Turkish black tea is the most popular drink in Turkey, even more popular than Turkish coffee. Topic: <inaudible> United Kingdom. The first record of tea in English came from a letter written by Richard Wickham, who ran an East India Company office in Japan, writing to a merchant in Macau requesting, "...the best sort of cha." In 1615, Peter Mundy, a traveller and merchant who came across tea in Fujian in 1637, wrote, "...cha? Only water with a kind of herb boiled in it." In 1657, Thomas Garway, a "...tobacconist and coffee man." was the first to sell tea in London at his house in Exchange Alley, charging between 16 and 50 shillings per pound. The same year, tea was listed as an item in the price list in a London coffee house, and the first advertisement for tea appeared in 1658. On 25 September 1660 Samuel Pepys recorded in his diary, "'I did send for a cup of tea a China drink of which I never had drank before.' It is probable that early imports were smuggled via Amsterdam or through sailors arriving on eastern boats. The marriage of King Charles II in 1662 to the Portuguese princess Catherine of Braganza also brought the tea-drinking habit to court. Official trade of tea began in 1664 with an import of only £2 2 ounces for presentation to the king, but grew to £24 million a year by 1801. Regular trade began in Canton, now Guangzhou, where it was controlled by two monopolies, the Chinese Kohong Trading Companies and the British East India Company. The Kohong acquired tea from tea men who had an elaborate supply chain into the mountains and provinces where tea grew. The East India Company brought back many products, of which tea was just one, but proved one of the most successful. It was initially promoted as a medicinal beverage or tonic but by the end of the 17th century was taken as an all-purpose drink, albeit mainly by the elite, as it was still expensive. Tea was not traded in significant amounts until the 18th century. By 1700 tea was being sold by grocers and tea shops in London, the latter frequented by women as well as men. By the 1720s black tea overtook green tea in popularity as the price dropped, and early on British drinkers began adding sugar and milk to tea, a practice that was not done in China. By the 1720s European maritime trade with China was dominated by exchange of silver for tea. As prices continued to drop, tea became increasingly popular, and by 1750 had become the British national drink. A fungus reduced coffee production in Ceylon by 95% in the 19th century, cementing tea's popularity. The escalation of tea importation and sales over the period 1690 to 1750 is mirrored closely by the increase in importation and sales of cane sugar. The British were not drinking just tea but sweet tea. Thus, two of Britain's trading triangles converged, the sugar sourced from Britain's trading triangle encompassing Britain, Africa and the West Indies and the tea from the triangle encompassing Britain, India and China. In China, the Qing dynasty Qianlong Emperor wrote to King George III in response to the McCartney mission's request for trade in 1793, "...our celestial empire possesses all things in prolific abundance and lacks no product within its borders." There is therefore no need to import the manufactures of outside barbarians in exchange for our own produce." Tea also had to be paid in silver bullion, and critics of the tea trade at this time would point to the damage caused to Britain's wealth by this loss of bullion. As a way to generate the silver needed as payment for tea, Britain began exporting opium from the traditional growing regions of British India in present-day Pakistan and Afghanistan into China. Although opium use in China had a long history, the British importation of opium, which began in the late 18th century, increased fivefold between 1821 and 1837, and usage of the drug became more widespread across Chinese society. The Qing government attitude towards opium, which was often ambivalent, hardened due to the social problems created by drug use, and took serious measures to curtail importation of opium in 1838-39. Tea by now had become an important source of tax revenue for the British Empire and the banning of the opium trade and thus the creation of funding issues for tea importers was one of the main causes of the First Opium War. While waging war on China was one of Britain's tactics, it also began to explore, then executed, a plan to use India for growing tea. 
After tea plants were smuggled out of China, plantations were established in areas such as Darjeeling, Assam, and Ceylon. As an attempt to circumvent its dependence on Chinese tea, the East India Company sent Scottish botanist Robert Fortune to China to purchase and bring out of China tea plants, which were then taken to India, although it was the discovery of native varieties of tea plant in India which proved more important for the development of production there. Tea remained a very important item in Britain's global trade, contributing in part to Britain's global dominance by the end of the 18th century. To this day tea is seen worldwide as a symbol of Britishness, but also, to some, as a symbol of old British colonialism. The London 2012 section of the Paralympic handover in Beijing included tea as part of the routine. A cup or mug of tea in Britain is usually made in a different way than is common in China and other Eastern countries. Over 90% of tea consumed is black tea, often but not always with a small amount of milk and, or sugar added. The tea used is often contained in a tea bag. As of 2009, the UK can boast one commercial tea plantation with another planned. The existing one lies in Cornwall and is owned by the Tregothnan estate. By 2015, another will lie in Pembrokeshire, Wales, owned by the Pembrokeshire Tea Company. <laughs> United States While coffee is by far more popular, hot brewed black tea is enjoyed both with meals and as a refreshment by much of the population. Similarly, iced tea is consumed throughout. In the southern states sweet tea, sweetened with large amounts of sugar or an artificial sweetener and chilled, is the fashion. Outside the south, sweet tea is sometimes found, but primarily because of cultural migration and commercialization, the drinking of tea in the United States was largely influenced by the passage of the Tea Act and its subsequent protest during the American Revolution. Tea consumption sharply decreased in America during and after the Revolution, when many Americans switched from drinking tea to drinking coffee. Considering tea drinking to be unpatriotic, the American specialty tea market quadrupled in the years from 1993 to 2008, now being worth $6.8 billion a year. Similar to the trend of better coffee and better wines, this tremendous increase was partly due to consumers who choose to trade up. Specialty tea houses and retailers also started to pop up during this period. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Canada. Canadians were big tea drinkers from the days of British colonization until the Second World War, when they began drinking more coffee like their American neighbors to the south. During the 1990s, Canadians begun to purchase more specialty teas instead of coffee. A commercial tea farm has opened on Vancouver Island in British Columbia in 2010 and expects production to start in 2015. Topic: <laughs> Australia The Aboriginal Australians drank an infusion from the plant species Leptospermum, a different plant from the tea plant or Camellia sinensis. Upon discovering Australia, Captain Cook noticed the Aboriginal peoples drinking it and called it tea. Today the plant is referred to as the tea tree. Through colonisation by the British, tea was introduced to Australia. In fact, tea was aboard the first fleet in 1788. Tea is a large part of modern Australian culture due to its British origins. Australians drink tea and have afternoon tea and morning tea much the way the British do. Additionally, due to Australia's climate, tea is able to be grown and produced in northern Australia. In 2000, Australia consumed 14,000 tonnes of tea annually. Tea production in Australia remains very small and is primarily in northern New South Wales and Queensland. Most tea produced in Australia is black tea, although there are small quantities of green tea produced in the Alpine Valleys region of Victoria. In 1884, the Cutton brothers established the first commercial tea plantation in Australia in Bingle Bay in northern Queensland. In 1883, Alfred Bushell opened the first tea shop in Australia in present day Queensland. In 1899, Bushell's sons moved the enterprise to Sydney and began selling tea commercially, founding Australia's first commercial tea seller Bushell's Company. <inaudible> <inaudible> Sri Lanka Sri Lanka is renowned for its high-quality tea and is the fourth biggest tea-producing country globally, after China, India and Kenya, and has a production share of 9% in the international sphere. 
The total extent of land under tea cultivation has been assessed at approximately 187,309 hectares. The plantations started by the British were initially taken over by the government in the 1960s, but have been privatized and are now run by plantation companies, which own a few estates or tea plantations each. Salon tea is divided into three groups as upcountry, mid-country, and low-country tea based on the geography of the land on which it is grown. Africa and South America Africa and South America have seen greatly increased tea production in recent decades, the great majority for export to Europe and North America respectively, produced on large estates, often owned by tea companies from the export markets. Almost all production is of basic mass market teas, processed by the crush, tear, curl method. Kenya is now the third largest global producer figures below, after China and India, and is now the largest exporter of tea to the United Kingdom. There is also a great consumption of tea in Chile. In South Africa, the non-Camellia sinensis beverage rooibos is popular. In South America yerba mate is a popular infused beverage. The only European plantation is Cha Goriana, located in Ribeira Grande, São Miguel Island, Azores, Portugal. In South America, the tea production in Brazil has strong roots due to the country's origins in Portugal, the strong presence of Japanese immigrants and also because of the influences of their neighbors' yerba mate culture. Brazil had a big tea production until the 80s, but it has weakened in the past decades. Right now, there's only a few families trying to reorganize the tea production in the Registro, São Paulo, facing strong competition against the coffee companies. <laughs> 